Hello and welcome to the front office in the JF-17 Thunder. Today we will be discussing the employment of air-to-air -air weapons. The JF-17 Thunder is a fairly decent plane in this regard. It can carry four radar-guided SD-10 missiles comparable to the AMRAM Bravo. And it can carry two PL-5 Mark IIs. However, the heat-seeking PL-5 Mark II is essentially crap and is best used for close-in air defense. The primary tool you will be using for air combat will be the SD-10. Uh, the gun is handled in another tutorial. So the first thing you want to do is make sure everything is up to snuff regarding your data coverage and you have your stores management screen and everything looks good. And then you press button 2 to switch into beyond visual range mode. So here you can see we have now selected the SD-10 and prep mode is auto, targeting type is middle, everything is as it should be. So not touching these settings is fairly common. And then you simply switch master arm on in order to have the missile go to standby mode. There are two ways to try to help and find your targets. First one is obviously the data link, but we have no other contributing factors to the data link at this time. So we will be using our own radar. By default, the radar will be on standby and silent. So you will be clicking both of these away. And then we can start looking for targets. The radar is very intuitive. You simply move the the button back and forth like this and you can also widen your search should you want to but this will also increase your detection signature which is inherently a bad thing of course altitude also matters so because right now we are accidentally scanning on the highest altitude and we know for a fact that our targets are a little bit below that and probably closer so we will be shifting our altitude to medium height and keep a close eye around us. Tally bandits. We have two groups of enemies straight ahead and we will be heading for this group here. They are about 35 clicks away. And locking on is simply pressing the T5 lock button. And it's not, it's not complicated at all. And you will also notice that a lock indicator will appear in your HUD, as including distance to target. And this will also tell you when you are in range and when you are in an optimum angle to fire. So we will be tuning down the data link here and keeping a closer tab on our target. We don't need to reduce the radar's range just yet. You can do so if you like, but it's usually not required. We can also see that the enemy are taking pot shots at us. So. So we are now in range, however it is in, I wouldn't say it's inadvisable, but if you can fire when it says shoot, it's always better to wait for the shoot. Um, because in range still means the missile might actually miss, so Fox free. The SD-10 is... Uh, essentially a fire and forget missile. It has its own radar and can independently track targets, meaning that it can be fired mad dog uh, in order to um, in order to just distract an enemy defense. So we, we splash one. And then then switching switching the target is easy. You just go to the next target on the list on your radar. And uh, for this, you might want to 
Ah, looks like we might actually have locked up <laughs> some debris there. The radar in the Jeff is very fun to use and also fairly powerful. So we will now be switching out and we will be employing a heat seeker for the next attack run, which is against a target below us. The, heat, the main heat seeking uh, mode is button free and this will put you into this ball sight mode as you can see here. Lock, lock, and lock. It, the airplane will be kind enough to tell you when you have a lock, uh, but I would not fire a Fox 2 with this airplane unless I have an optimal angle because these missiles are prone to problems and aren't really the best heat seekers in the game. So we will uh, align ourselves behind. We have clear tone. Fox 2. And splash. So air combat in the Jeff is actually fairly simple. As long as you feel you have a grasp on the radar, it is not tricky at all. Uh, getting a grasp on the radar comes down to three things. The first thing is making sure it's not on standby or silent. This is the most common. Uh, this is the most common error I uh, encounter. Then, it is about identifying what you're shooting at. Please do not shoot at friendly targets. And the third thing is the target altitude. Usually, playing around with the target altitude is usually where you'll get the best results. And I hope this has been of help to you. This is Shooter. I'm out.